Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back and I hope that you find the supply and demand technical analysis as well as the fundamental analysis um, useful. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, share and if you have any questions, uh, send them in the comment section below if you're watching this on YouTube or you can email me at info at trading 180 Dot com and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So, uh, starting off as we always do on the fundamentals, fundamental analysis and risk sentiment. Um, in the week ahead, uh, we have central banks in the US and the UK and Japan will be deciding on monetary policy um, in the coming week. And other important releases include US jobs report, it's gonna be important, trade balance, personal income and, out, um, and outlays, ISM manufacturing, PMIs, that's important for um, inflation, um, UK um, consumer confidence, market PMIs, Eurozone second quarter GDP growth, that's gonna be another important one. Um, inflation rate, also very important. Um, business survey, Japan, consumer confidence, retail sales, industrial production, um, uh, China, PMI and manufacturing PMIs again that's crucial for inflation and Australia second quarter inflation rate so a lot of important data coming out uh, this week from a uh, to catch up from last week um, what we had was pretty much the Fed um, in the lead up to uh, their potential rate cut and I say potential even though we do have uh, the Fed watch is saying that it is 100% priced in um, an ease uh, or a cut. 78% um, of uh, financial institutions think that there's going to be a quarter point cut, whereas 21.4% um, believe there's going to be a 0.5% cut. Um, the data for the GDP second quarter was actually uh, better than expected, right? So, or, or less worse, basically. Um, the figure would come up at, I think it was 2.1. Um, so, uh, yeah, so the US Fed expected to prolong the party with a cut next week. Um, so US economy is experiencing the longest expansion on record, but weaker external demand and trade tensions are risks to the outlook and also obviously inflation as well. So, um, you know, the US economy is performing solidly uh, since the end of the financial crisis. But I think this is more what they would call an insurance cut. Um, also, last week we had, you know, the Euro um, Mario Draghi um, basically signalling future stimulus. So, problem is, is that all central banks are looking to kind of weaken their currencies and cheapen their currencies to boost uh, economic growth. Um, um, but I think stimulus is worse than uh, a, a central bank uh, rate cut. So um, be careful, I would say, or be, be aware of buying, really buying the euro um, at any point um, as, he, as the uh, European Central Bank is, is indicating that there will be some potential stimulus. So watch for, you know, the European economy. And also what we also have, again, as just covered as well in the Japanese time is times is that we have the Bank of Japan Deputy Governor Central Bank ready to increase stimulus as well. So, um, and all options are on the table. This is from Reuters as well. So um, pretty much all central banks apart from probably Canada um, at the moment and uh, the UK are really signaling um, that they want to, uh, you know, either cut rates or uh, or enter into some sort of uh, um, more stimulus and uh, if you're unsure of pretty much what effect that does have on the economy it should or the currency i should say um what you can do is there is the fundamental analysis course and sentiment analysis course and it goes through um you know gross domestic products inflation interest rates and the interest rate cycle inflation interest rates we visited and you know nice um uh, um say nice but it's about 14 um videos of uh of um basically fundamentals and the core uh, fundamental principles and what you really need to know um, about fundamental analysis and how to apply it to your um, your technical analysis because this is what really moves the market first. Anyways, um, lots of fundamentals coming up uh, this week. So um, let's get into the technicals and we're gonna start off as we always do on the Dow Jones dollar index. Dow Jones from last week 
we came down into this demand zone and um, even though there was a close below um, I never you know assumed that a close below is that the level was gone um, and what we did have because of other central banks really kind of weakening and potentially weakening their currencies even though the dollar is um, the Federal Reserve is weak, trying to weaken theirs is um, we had pretty much a dollar rally over the five days um, supply zones uh, are potential value um, and obviously when prices are coming up into these supply zones the market didn't see these areas um, as you know uh, potential value you know as far as um, looking to sell or an expensive area if you know what I mean it was obviously you know prices were a bargain in the dollar um, with dollar Jones Dow Jones dollar index which is a measure of dollar strength against the major currencies like the pound the euro and the yen and the Australian dollar um, it's like the um, the dollar was a great performer so if we go to the actual dollar and update the charts we are up now into the highs now what is going to be the catalyst that makes this potentially fall right as we're up into this supply zone if we are going to fall and prices are seen as an expensive um, price and traders don't really want to buy up here and demand kind of dries up and supply comes into the market and it could be obviously the uh, the cut from the Federal Reserve so um, this potentially is a shorting opportunity if you want to short the dollar I'm always going to be a long dollar for the foreseeable future because out of all of the major economies the uh, the um, the US um, is doing uh, the best so if we do get a shorting opportunity um, it, you'll be shorting any of the uh, dollar crosses with the Dow Jones dollar index as confirmation that the dollar is getting weaker personally I'll be looking to um, you know long the dollar so I'll be looking for any kind of pullbacks higher highs and then pullbacks into what we would known as uh, um, uh, demand before looking at getting long so anything like that or any any bullish price action basically um, on the dollar that confirms that I should be buying the dollar um, so again short trades probably into this week if you are looking to short the dollar and probably the uh, the Fed rate cut announcement may obviously um, uh, uh, facilitate that but looking at buy trades at levels of demand or created demand uh, next is going to be the you um, the US dollar Japanese yen currency pair and again because we had pretty much a rally in the dollar overall this week or last week you know you can see the effect of that and this is pretty much what's happened we've rallied up into this supply zone so looking at dollar yen we can delete that level and that level of supply and again what we're looking at is potential shorts if the dollar index starts to sell off we do have an area of demand right there and we also have another area of demand into here so we've got pretty much few levels of demand we've also got a level where we have um, support as well and that's important for the supply and demand order equation reason why is because even though we have these levels of demand where are traders where is there is where is there going to be more likely to be uh, demand orders and we need you know support and resistance traders to also look at levels and look to enter new trades as well so um, in this level of demand which is proof of value as prices made higher highs and higher lows if we do come down into this zone which would be the 108 round number that'd be a decent buy as we have not only proven value but we also have a technical level where traders would be looking to potentially get long the next one is going to be here so uh, where traders will be looking at support becoming you know resistance potentially and then back into support again so again we have technical traders if prices come down to this 107.25 level as a level to get potentially long right now will be shorts potentially a bit higher up if you were looking to short the dollar around there moving on to 
the dollar swiss dollar swiss again this week no surprise to see dollar rallying taking out that level of supply now we're into the higher level of supply so dollar swiss we can delete that level there and this now becomes a level of demand so what we have is a bit of a level of support and resistance within that level of demand and either short the dollar this week in the lead up to potential Fed rate cut and even um, during the Fed rate cut and also what I would say is, is that you know the market is trying to price in a Fed cut as well so um, is has the market priced in the cut already so if it has then you may not expect much of much movement to you know the downside is it's not really going to be a surprise is it um, but let's see what happens with price anyway I'm again I'm still long dollar regardless of what the Fed kind of does um, until circumstances change but if you do want to get short on the dollar now is the time and then if you're looking to buy the dollar I'd be buying anywhere around here probably in the lower end of that demand zone here preferably if we can get a nice move all the way back down if the dollar starts to sell off I'll be definitely getting long around here um, looking at the dollar CAD dollar CAD let's zoom in a little bit let's zoom in from last week again strong dollar prices ended up coming higher into this higher supply zone taking out that level of supply so we've got dollar CAD and the CAD has been uh, a bit weak and this was uh, due to I think some um, some sort of I think it was GDP numbers or inflation numbers I think it might have been GDP uh, quarter on quarter numbers which came out um, as negative so that wasn't great for the uh, Canadian dollar this week but now we've come up into that supply zone touched it putting in a bit of a pin bar so if you do want to get short now is pretty much the time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably look to clean up this area of demand right there so that'd be where potentially uh, the uh, the next best buying opportunity in fact we do have some hidden demand right here right there and for those of you that have taken the course will understand why um, and then we've got a bit of a buying opportunity there so we could see prices come down again lower time frame what you would do is go down into something like the four hour you know your trading time frame intraday and then look for buying opportunities around there or obviously down at the uh, absolute lows which is my preferred area to look for long trades if again if you're looking for short trades it'd be here if not if prices break through that supply zone um, and again supply and demand just as a reminder is seen as uh, potential bargain areas right and this is because price when price came here back in the 21st of June this was seen as an absolute bargain for the Canadian dollar at that exchange rate prices sold off so when prices come back to this area you have to say is this seen as a potential bargain again at that exchange rate for the Canadian dollar so obviously you'd be short if you're short in this pair it means that you're buying the CAD which is the quote currency you know the, um, the US dollar was very expensive here hence there was no demand there there was more supply there right same thing it was going to try and take first touches of levels so if you do want to be a buyer of the Canadian dollar now is pretty much the, the, the chance to uh, look for short trades especially with the um, US dollar looking to cut rates um, decent potential short term um, trade if you are trading against the dollar moving on to the New Zealand dollar US dollar and yeah we had a bit of a sell off into this supply zone right here yeah um, going to the chart and updating it so anyone who got short here well done there was a bit of demand here but not much as the dollar pretty much strengthened but that created a new supply zone right here so supply so 
the plan this week potentially we could see um, you know a bit of a move down into that demand zone then a move back up and then that'll be the first area to look for short trades if you're looking to buy the dollar um, preferably you'd probably want prices to really kind of come up to this supply zone here and what I'm going to do is update it a little bit put that there and that there as well I will keep that level of I should put it here yeah put that there all right so what we're looking at is short trades into that 0 0.67 if you want to get uh, if you want to buy the dollar if you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar which has been quite strong as of recent um, overall um, I'm also looking to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar but not against the uh, US dollar at the moment but um, uh, you're looking at probably some long trades around here into this top end of this um, demand zone we also have is a bit of support and resistance within that area as well so just around that 60 0 0.66 round number or just below I should say potentially looking at buy trades within that larger area of demand and again short trades here preferably probably up to here would be where I'll be looking to get also get short as well um, pound dollar and the pound has literally just been selling off and continues its sell off and this is just due to Brexit uncertainty um, unfortunately so um, you know the dollar you can see has just been you know going from strength to strength um, got a decent trade last week didn't take this trade um, this week I was waiting for prices to kind of do something different um, but it didn't the setup didn't really occur so unfortunately missed out on that short trade um, let's go to the charts so what do we have pretty much we're down into this long-term demand zone from way back in uh, April 2017 um, and it's probably looking um, very bearish for the uh, for the British pound again as long as there's a lot of uncertainty Boris Johnson you know being elected this week but um, no deal is still on the table so as long as there's still no deal uh, potentially on the table um, I think the pound will continue to sell off Europe um, are willing to do an extension um, which would please the markets but um, I think uh, Boris Johnson is in a bit of a catch-22 where he has to kind of force through a um, a no deal Brexit potentially but it depends on what if Parliament managed to block it they already managed to block proroguing Parliament um, which is one way that Boris Johnson could have uh, you know forced a no deal Brexit so now um, it, you know chances are there might be some sort of general election and again the more uncertainty and the more the can is kicked down the road actually the more the can is kicked down the road the better it is I think for for the British pound the more likely it is the pound in the UK is uh, you know to leave with no deal is the further prices will uh, continue to fall so you know just be uh, wary if uh, trading the pound I think I'm gonna leave things as they are for now um, technically we have created a new um, you know supply zone right here right there uh, maybe I can lower this a little bit in fact I will I'll lower this down to down to here and we've got another demand zone potentially right down in this area right there so long and short of it is this is if you look into if you're looking to buy the pound uh, based on purely probably on, on some sort of sentiment play now is pretty much the time you've got some sort of double bottom formation etc now is a is, is the time but um, if you are looking to you know trend continuation where you've got lower highs lower lows lower highs lower lows just wait for pullbacks into you know certain areas before looking at potential short trades you do have a bit of confluence probably around here All right that would be probably the better area this higher area um, to look for potential shorts but again just go down into your trading time frame look for any kind of shorts around these areas here before um, if prices do get back up there 
looking at the euro dollar euro dollar this uh, for last week again we had a level that's been touched once twice and the once levels kind of touch a few times they tend to uh, tend to break I said that last week and especially with the euro um, potentially announcing stimulus you know you knew pretty much what happened dollar strengthened euro weakened and um, we're down into this um, this demand zone which has been touched several times as well um, but if you're buying the dollar you're really buying the dollar in an expensive area and I'll explain and if we go to the chart right let's go to the euro dollar so yes stimulus was announced on um, I think it was the Wednesday um, but and everyone was kind of expecting prices to really kind of fall away one of the reasons potentially why prices didn't fall away was because there were so many people that were getting short so if everyone's short um, then the best thing to do for the market is to take out you know liquidity um, is uh, is look for stops basically and take out and search for liquidity because uh, if there's not enough um, you know there needs to be enough buy orders in the market for sell orders and if there's not enough buy orders for people to sell then the market has to look for those buy orders if everyone's going short yeah if everyone's going short and this is a bit of a potential um just a bit of education and the way to look at the market if everyone's getting short right someone's taking the other side of those trades so there needs to be enough buy orders in order for the market to go short if you're going short yeah and you're pressing sell on your broker then your stop loss which is above the market is a buy order yeah so if you zoom down to the one hour everybody would have been short once the announcement came out about Mario Draghi yeah, and him adding stimulus so after an hour or so this nice bearish candle yeah would have been where everyone would have been trying to get what short their stop losses are placed in obvious places above the market right here and I was saying in uh, our trading 180 telegram group coaching group I said to just wait yeah do not chase price we never chase price we chase value so and I'll get back to value in a sec but explaining the stop hunt and what happened was is this is in real time uh, prices took out the stops didn't they yeah so it needs to take out the buy orders he needs to collect the buy orders and then what happened is is traders ended up trying to get long pressing buy to get long and again if they buy then they can sell at the same time and then it's pretty much everyone's got chopped out and again before this came out I was saying for everyone to just you know to just sit on their hands and wait and wait for proof of value yeah and proof of value would have been for the market to sell off at this point in time and then pull back because you need the market to prove that there is that the, that the dollar is uh, an absolute bargain there and how do you know that the dollar is a bargain if you're trading you know in real time you don't you have to wait for the market to prove itself prices come lower make lower highs lower lows and then wait for a pullback and that would be where we would look to enter which would be around here also a caveat to that would be the fact that you are actually buying at lows you're buying what's say buying at lows you are buying the dollar at an expensive area so look at the market all right you've got what I call a value range value range tool yeah if you're a buyer of the euro then this looks to be a bargain but that means that the US dollar must be what expensive yeah who buys at highs Right. who buys at eyes it's amateur traders traders who don't understand you know value so when the news came out about stimulus and as as, um, as triggering as it was to try and get short you had to understand that you were buying at the absolute market high you were buying in an expensive area you were buying the dollar because if you're shorting this pair you're buying the dollar you're buying the dollar at an absolute high what you want to do is wait for a pullback yeah either a pullback which is going to be into that supply zone there 
or you need for prices to prove that this there is no dem there is no more demand here so you need price action to go lower create a new lower lower lows and then wait for a pullback because again proof of value this is not rally based drop drop based rally um trading you know this is um something totally unique and a totally unique way of looking at the market um rally based drop drop based rally does not take into account value and something that i can uh, teach you and understand and make you understand and you can look at all the free stuff as well as uh take the trading 180 course as well so um we say that of this whipsaw i know many traders got chopped out and um we're still looking to obviously short this pair um, but not with everybody else, not with the herd. Yeah, we look to uh, trade when we have an edge. There was no really no edge in this trade, um, in this news announcement, and uh, so we got to just sit on our hands, wait for a little bit, wait for potential pullbacks or proof of value before looking at getting uh, long on the dollar. So again, into this week, either prices fall away, and then you're waiting for a pullback into supply. Or you're waiting for a potential retracement, which is what I'm looking to do, and uh, look for short trades there. That way you can buy the dollar at a cheaper price. Um, moving on to the euro yen, the euro yen this week, this touched once, potentially again, you know, this is a potential move to the upside, but again, why would you be buying the euro if um, into the week if you understood that they were potentially introducing stimulus? And obviously, prices did manage to sell off. They did come back into now what is produced um, a bit of a supply zone. Um, but both currency pairs are looking extremely weak. So um, with two weak currencies, it's going to be very difficult to kind of trade that. We want to really trade strength versus weakness. Um, with the euro introducing potential stimulus in the month or the next month or two and the Bank of Japan again going back to the news um, looking to also introduce some stimulus um, potentially you know this was you know pretty much a choppy market was what was going to be expected or is more unpredictable so going to the charts euro yen we uh, what we happened this week is that a supply zone was created as we made lower highs, lower lows, and then prices came back into that supply zone. And they're looking at actually a sell off. Um, again, if you are looking to get short right now, this would be the time into this week. But again, bear in mind that the Japanese yen now may potentially um, introduce or, or signal some sort of stimulus. If they do, then price could rally for the euro as the uh the intended consequence of a stimulus of introducing stimulus is for the japanese yen to weaken you know in in price and get cheaper in price so if they're doing that stimulus up we go potentially if not if they signal that they're going to be on a hold um we could see prices sell off and again those are pretty much your options um Moving on to the Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar. And this was a nice trade this week for uh, many of the traders, um, you know, getting short around this area here. I think it was around the uh, 0 0.7, I think it was 0 0.735 level. Loads of traders, um, you know, we were waiting for this level to kind of break. Uh, it was more of a stop hunt setup. Um, and then prices pretty much fell away. So nice trade this week uh, on the Aussie dollar coming up into that supply zone as well. So um, Aussie dollar, we can get rid of that. And really there's really no kind of supply zone up until we get to back up into this zone here. All right. So that'd be the new supply zone. This is where we got demand. Now, where we are now, we could potentially start to reverse due to potential profit taking. And this being obviously, you know, the dollar's um, time in the spotlight with the Fed cutting rates. So we could see the market start to uh, ease up a little bit. Um, what we'd want to see is price 
if you want to get short, it's probably priced to create a lower high, lower low, and then wait for price to come back into this supply zone before looking to get short. Um, otherwise, it looks like we're going to, you know, really kind of have to wait for some sort of pullback into a supply zone and then look for short trades around here. I prefer probably this if prices did come back up this high again, looking to short this area, this probably above this uh, um, 0 0.705 half number, um, you know, but um, let's see what happens. Profit taking. Um, if you if you're still in this trade, you probably may want to look to you know take profit, um, you know on, on Monday if you didn't take it on Friday, as I do think that prices will end up going higher. They could obviously go lower. We have no idea, but um, in in the lead up to the rate cut, potentially um, the dollar may want to want, may want to weaken. And if you are looking to buy the Australian dollar, probably now would be the time. Or if price came down to the absolute low, that would be a bargain area for the Australian dollar. And finally, we got the Australian dollar, Japanese yen. And this week, we did have price finally sell off a right, couple of pin bar um, signals. If you trade pin bars, about three within the past week or so, and then prices finally fell away. Um, so where does that leave us this week? And we have price come down into his demand zone. Now his demand zone hasn't gone yet. Um, I think potentially again, if the um, the Bank of Japan decide that they want to, you know, introduce stimulus, nice, this would be a nice buy, right? A very nice buy, um, you know, to the, to the upside as they're trying to cheapen their currency. Um, what we could see again is maybe in in the uh, lead up to that announcement you could see this level break and if it does then this would be the area to look for potential long trades if you're looking for a short trade there is actually supply right here as well i'm going to clean this up a little bit where you've got that and yeah so those are your areas to look for short trades and again the japanese yen um potentially uh not introducing stimulus this week could strengthen the Japanese yen risk off as well if any kind of risk off sentiment comes into the market it does strengthen the yen especially against the Australian dollar and risk off sentiment would be you know Trump trade wars China slowing down Brexit fears etc so um buy trades probably right now um potentially in the lead up to the announcement if not you're looking at buying around this area here and again it all depends on what the bank of japan does with stimulus so that brings us to the end this week um don't forget to like subscribe share and comment any questions i'll get back to you as soon as possible and guys i hope you have a great trading week and take care